Okay, it's time to talk about Dogecoin, which is a topic I never thought I would be talking about on this channel, mainly because this isn't the sort of thing I invest in. The only cryptocurrencies I actually like are Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum, and to a lesser extent, Ripple. But I realize it's important to talk about because the viewers of this channel need orders from Washington, so to speak. When something big in the market happens, I realize people are looking around for answers, and if I'm not talking about it, I realize people will go to a channel where the content sounds like it's made for babies, so... Even though this isn't my sort of topic, I think it's important I talk about it just so I have my message out there. Today we're going to talk about Dogecoin, which actually recently passed an $11 billion market cap. Now some of you are thinking that is just insane. We're talking about Dogecoin, 30 cents a Dogecoin, whereas not even a month ago it was only 5 cents a Dogecoin. Well... You know, crazier things have happened, and we're going to get into why in this video. First off, a little bit about me. I'm an investor here on YouTube documenting my own journey and giving educational material where possible. Now, specifically on cryptocurrency, I think I have one of the best pedigrees in cryptocurrency. I started investing in Bitcoin a little around late 2012, but I got serious in 2013, as you can see here. If you don't know what this is, this is an email from Mt. Gox. And if you don't know what Mt. Gox is, you don't know anything about cryptocurrency. This was the biggest event when cryptocurrency was starting out. This is when people thought the sky was falling and it was over for cryptocurrency. How wrong they were. So Mt. Gox, once upon a time, was the biggest and only exchange where you could really buy Bitcoin. This was before Coinbase. Now famously, it blew up during a hack when they lost all of their cryptocurrency. But here you can see an email sent to me registering for this website proving that i was involved and i knew the value of cryptocurrency far 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 ahead of anyone else and i think viewers of this channel will know that i am routinely ahead of the curve when it comes to predicting what will happen in investing right so i called the coronavirus in january of last year so that naturally leads us to the next question which is how do you value something right how do you value something as a currency because well Currencies don't have intrinsic value now, do they? Or so people say. But cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin and Bitcoin are valuable because they are extremely useful. And so what do I mean by that? If you ever had to do a uh, international transaction at a bank, I can tell you it's a pain. I mean, depending on how experienced you are, it could take up to a week for you to actually get through the process properly. And God forbid, if you have to convert into another foreign currency while you're doing that swift transaction, it's a mess. And the larger the amount gets, the longer it takes, the more difficult it is. And also, too, when you're doing a transaction through a bank, an international wire transfer, you have no privacy. The bank workers have to see what you're doing, pretty much interview you, get your background. It takes time. It's annoying. You have no privacy. When I was doing transactions internationally in large amounts, I didn't want the bank teller asking me, as nice as they were, she was a very nice lady, by the way. Still, I don't want to have to have a conversation explaining why I'm wiring so much money all over the place. So Bitcoin and cryptocurrency overall, they have value in certain niche aspects, Bitcoin more than others, right? So Bitcoin Cash is better for day-to-day -day transactions. Bitcoin itself pretty much replaces the entire international wire transfer system something that PayPal has been trying to do for years. So it's fast, the limits on amounts are good, the fees are low relative to the large amounts you're sending, and you have privacy. And that explains the Bitcoin's price today. But more than that, how do you actually know the price of Bitcoin? So in currency speculation, there's this concept of monetary velocity. And so what is that? So monetary velocity is how you determine the ratio at which currencies trade. So money velocity is putting it really simply, GDP divided by the monetary base. And so I'll run it through on the US dollar first, and then I'll apply it to cryptocurrency. So here we have in 2018, which I picked as a more normal year, this was before the coronavirus made everything crazy. Anyway, so in 2018, we had about $3.6 trillion of US dollars in circulation, according to the Fed. At that time, the GDP, the gross domestic product, which is the value of all the dollars circulating and engaging in transactions was about $20 trillion. So you divide those two numbers, 3.67 trillion divided by 20.24 trillion, you get a ratio of 5.6x. And this will become important later because it's essentially a magical ratio that really gives you incredible insight into the price of gold and even into the price of crypto. And here you can see this number is tracked over time from the Federal Reserve. So again, pretty much throughout all the 2010s, this number was bouncing between 4x and even 6x but averaging out in the 5 so like a 5x you can see down here later the coronavirus really changed things it actually right now the uh us dollar ratio is at a 1.7 which is really going to become important later but actually is atrocious and i argue the real reason why cryptocurrency has blown up so much 
And really quick, you can actually do the same thing for gold. So in 2018, all the gold in the entire world was worth 7.7 .7 trillion US dollars, but the total value gold trade in the futures and in ETFs and paper markets, right? So all the gold traded outside of physical was 36.5 trillion. So that's why you can see why the physical price of gold is always weaker than the actual traded value of gold. That's why paper gold has so much power. But anyway, when you divide those two numbers, like in the formula we had before, you get around a four to five X. And so if you do this for every currency, right? So US dollars in 2018, when the country was more stable, was about a 5.6 X. Gold, about a 4.5 X, a little lower. Euros is two, and actually US dollars today, they're trading at a ratio, monetary velocity, of 1.5. So what does this mean? Let's apply this now to Bitcoin. According to Yahoo Finance, there was this insane number traded in Bitcoin the last 30 days. I won't even try to read that number. And if you divide this number by 1.7, which is about more or less what the ratio of US dollars are trading now after Powell blew up the monetary supply and the value of the US dollar fell so much, because Bitcoin more or less trades at the same ratio as the dollar does to the monetary supply. So you take that number, which is about the total value of Bitcoin, according to its transaction rates, divided by 18 million coins, which are in circulation for Bitcoin right now, and you get, at the same ratio as the dollar, 54000 almost $55,000. And uh, what is Bitcoin trading at right now? I'm looking at my desk here, it's $55,000. So you can see how eerily close that is. And by the way, this ratio applies to just about every other cryptocurrency, except for ones that are highly volatile. For example, before the coronavirus pandemic, before the monetary supply of the US dollar just absolutely blew up and the ratio fell from a 5x to a 1, 1.5, averaged out over time to about a 1.7. Bitcoin's value, if you were to do this calculation, was $18,000. And what was Bitcoin trading at before the coronavirus pandemic? $18,000. Now this number is not static because the amount of Bitcoin transacted in is growing every single quarter, right? So the number of transactions, the value of those transactions in Bitcoin are just going up and up and up and up. But you can see how we can use this. We can make a model and actually predict the price of Bitcoin if we just make assumptions or try to guess what the rate of transaction growth will be. Bitcoin grows, as we'll see here. These are the total transaction counts, which can tell you the rate at the number of transactions are growing in cryptocurrencies. So actually, believe it or not, Bitcoin was the leader. It's growing at a pretty solid rate. It's actually insane how much it grows a year. Whereas Ethereum really is the king. But anyway, you have Dogecoin here too. It has been growing. So let's take a look at some of these figures. Bitcoin, the number of transactions grow at about 93% a quarter. Dogecoin is actually growing faster. It's actually, it actually grew 146% the last quarter. Now that's not insane. It's not exactly wiping Bitcoin out, but that is a big growth. And here you can see the transaction rates for Dogecoin. In December, it was only a volume of 3 trillion, and recently in April, it blew up to 258 trillion total volume of transactions. So you can see the transaction volume in Dogecoin was blowing up, but it took time for the price to adjust to it. So in a lot of ways, Dogecoin's price makes sense. So how do I know this? Here are my predictions for Dogecoin. Looking at the volume, taking the same price that we know from Bitcoin, my price predictions for Dogecoin are that if the volume of Dogecoin keeps blowing up, keeps keeps increasing at the current rate that it's at, my target price for Dogecoin is actually $1.18 per Dogecoin. Now, if the volume more or less stays the same, if we kind of hit our cap here for a while and only grows steadily around the 258 trillion mark, my price target for Dogecoin is 61 cents. Now here's the thing though, the fair value of Dogecoin, according to my calculation, which is a normal monetary ratio, which is about the 5x that we saw before, the fair value of Dogecoin is about 21 cents per Dogecoin. And how do I know that? Again, going back to Bitcoin, before the monetary supply of the United States just utterly blew up, you can see that here, falling from a ratio of 5 down to a ratio in the 1s, Hmm, I wonder when stimulus happened. Really makes you think. Anyway. We can see that at the normal valuation, Bitcoin was $18,000. Totally makes sense. So the real question about Dogecoin's price is, will the US dollar recover? Will the ratio go back up? I'm not so sure about that, but that's the decision investors will have to make. So the fair value of Bitcoin even right now is in the 18,000s. Still higher than it was before, because it was even trading, I think, in the 
16, 17 thousands back in time, back to the mid to late 2010s. The fair value of Dogecoin, if the dollar recovers, is 21 cents a Doge. And here are my price predictions based on this formula, which by the way is used for every other currency, whether it be gold or anything else, because we can take the GDP of a Bitcoin, just like you would for a country's currency, divide it by these ratios, then divide it by the amount of coins in circulation, and we can get these prices. So then the real question about value in cryptocurrency actually really comes down to not hype, not memes, not speculation, is how much that currency is useful. Ethereum is eminently useful. Bitcoin is rapidly becoming the leader in large international transactions. So what is the value of cryptocurrencies? I assert that the value of cryptocurrencies, of the amount of money they're moving in transactions, their GDP, so to speak, multiplied by common monetary ratios that we use for other currencies, which at the dollar for the moment is about a 1.7, but on average, normally it's about a 5x. You have to factor in in price in the future, right? Because Bitcoin and Ethereum and Dogecoin's transaction volumes and amounts will go up over time. That's how you arrive at the price of cryptocurrencies. Now there are threats to cryptocurrency, right? So central banks have been working on alternatives trying to make their own cryptocurrencies. We'll have to see how that goes. But I don't think there's really danger of an outright ban or destruction of cryptocurrencies, kind of like what happened to online gambling, right? So a lot of people, they like to be haughty and say, you can't ban cryptocurrency. Uh, it's too decentralized. You can't shut people down. It's private. Well, to those people, I say, I think we've learned over these past few years just how effective regulation and online censorship is. So again, I ask those people, try to gamble, do a hand of online poker. It's not going to happen. You can't gamble online in US dollars. And that's the same thing for any potential regulation. It's dangerous. It's really, really dangerous. Now, I think what's likely to happen is that Bitcoin is going to get sidelined like gold. So a lot of people like to say, you know, gold is the real threat to fiat currencies, right? So hold gold. None of this is going to hold up. All this fiat system is going to collapse. Well, again, if gold were really a threat to the monetary system, it wouldn't be sidelined in the way it is now. So sure, you're allowed to hold gold and gold has a value to boomers just because of its shiny and limited supply but gold is no serious threat to the US dollar so it's allowed to exist alongside of the US dollar but you can't primarily transact in it so in the future I see Bitcoin becomes popular perennially with Millennials and even some zoomers but it's on the sidelines compared to a central bank cryptocurrency so it has value to that generation they'll continue to use it but primarily the central bank cryptocurrencies will supplant it in official capacities. I don't think cryptocurrency overall is going to get banned entirely. There's just way too much money tied up into it, right? So you have now mining companies in Bitcoin with multi-billion dollar market caps. The value, the total market cap of Bitcoin right now, I think is a trillion dollars. So an $11 billion to Dogecoin and there are other cryptocurrencies. Banning that, shutting down the entire crypto market when so many companies are adopting it now, like PayPal and even Venmo, Banning that would create such a time bomb in the economy. It would just destroy so much value overnight. I don't think they'll risk that. That's like shutting down the gold market, which again would cause a 7.7 .7 to $36 trillion hole in the entire global economy. So that's not going to happen either. I think cryptocurrencies are here to stay. Cryptocurrencies generally, I can't tell you which currency will win overall. There are different properties, right? So Bitcoin seems to be the major tether that all other altcoins trade on. But... Overall, I'm optimistic about cryptocurrency. It's very useful. It has value, obviously, right? So I think a lot of you would accept 10,000 Dogecoin just as I would as well. I mean, if you were to say to me, oh, Eugene, can I get a shout out? I'll give you 10,000 Doge. Yeah, I would accept it. I would give you, if you gave me 10,000 Doge, I'd give you a shout out on, uh, on my channels that have uh, collectively over a million subscribers. Yeah, so you can see right there just from that very fact. Dogecoin obviously has a value. Speaking honestly, the Federal Reserve just went on one of the biggest monetary expansions, craziest monetary policies we've seen in the last 20 years to plug up like a $50 trillion hole created by the coronavirus pandemic to try to fix the damage created by that. So why would they create another trillion dollar hole in the global economy? It, I can tell you countries around the world and particularly Western countries are already so fragile as it is. I don't think central banks can afford to shoot themselves in the foot and create trillions and trillions of dollars in damage. The social fallout from that would just be too great. So my prediction is Bitcoin finds a place, Dogecoin finds a place, Ethereum finds a place like gold and silver and platinum and we move forward. So I encourage you to make your own model, do what I did, arrive at your own Bitcoin price and then factor in future growth of transactions. 
and there you can get Bitcoin price targets. So finally ending this video, here are my predictions once again for Dogecoin. If the volume goes exponential, my price target is $1.18. If it maintains, I think the fair value of Bitcoin is about 61 cents a Dogecoin right now, so there's still room. Then finally, the fair fair value if the US if the US dollar doesn't hyperinflate, which we can see now it obviously is just by how much that ratio fell. The fair value of Dogecoin, if this somehow all gets repaired, is about 21 cents a Dogecoin. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that it helps you understand the value of Dogecoin and also how to value currencies and cryptocurrencies generally. So good luck to everyone speculating out there and I will check you out in the next video.